Hey there, it's Yobo, back for life according to Yobo, day 103, 103, how you doing? I must say I'm doing absolutely well, enjoying life, I know you're enjoying life, we're moving on with life according to Yobo, no we're moving along with how to give life to the vision, how to take your dream, your vision, your hopes, your dreams, all that. How do we make it come to pass? Honey, we're talking about understanding the process, chapter 6. Are you ready to move on to chapter 6? Let's get ready. Because the first thing I'm going to do is make some church folks mad. I picked at the first page. Remember, I wrote this book five years ago. Sometimes when I'm reading it, I may stumble over some things. It's because I haven't even taken time to proofread the book. I'm not proofread, but to read to preview what I'm about to read. So all this material, five years old, let's see what I wrote five years ago, understanding the process. I talked about that, about that before, I think it was on day 64. So go back to day 64 and I talk about the potter, when the potter makes something and how it has to go on the wheel and it has to go on the shelf and it has to go in the fire. That's part of the process. And even with your dream and with your vision, there is a process involved. And you can't become discouraged when it looks as though nothing is happening. Guess what? You might be in the oven. You might be on the shelf. So be patient. Let's get into the process. Let's see what this is all about. Understanding the process. There is a process to obtaining anything you want in life. Very little of it requires getting on your knees. I already told y'all it's going to make the church folk mad. Because church folk want to pray about everything. We don't want to work. We want to huck them a shondo and get in a $20 prayer line and believe God and confess. That stuff don't work. We want to get an email and type amen on it and forward it to 12 people. And a miraculous financial blessing is going to be on your front doorstep in 12 days. That stuff don't work. That's just a bunch of BS. Get the first two books. We're not talking about mess stress and BS. All that is is game. That's church BS. That's somebody playing on your ignorance. Don't fall for it. And people will get mad at me for telling the truth before they will get mad at somebody in a pulpit in a collar that's running game on them. But trust me, I love pastors. I don't talk about pastors. I don't talk about ministers. I don't talk about the men and women of God. But I will talk about some shysters in the pulpit pepping the word of God. That stuff does not work. All that blabbing and grabbing, it don't work. Religion causes some of us to be irrational. I'm getting off my soapbox. Let me read the book. Religion causes some of us to be irrational. If you want to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, there is a way to ensure your desired result. I'm talking about being a CEO. Let's say at McDonald's. You don't have to fast. You don't have to pray. You don't have to do the huck a buck a shuck all, the, all around the church. But it will require that you get your rusty dusty up out the bed every day and get down to business. Go earn yourself a master's degree and spend the next 20 years getting developed to be a CEO. See, the problem is with the vision, people want it like this because in church, you can elevate yourself just like this. You say, oh, I'm called to the ministry. So all of a sudden, you go from sitting on the back row, you on the front row. You've ordered you a collar. You ordered your business cards. When I say, hey, hey, Danny, then you stop me. Oh, oh no, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm profit. I'm, I'm, I'm profit uh, 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 gravy train. Okay, so you've been Danny. For the last 30 years that I've been knowing you, not all of a sudden you prophet, you bishop, you evangelist. See, that stuff work in the church. You go from the bottom to the so-called top because people think this is the top in the church. Not realizing what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you want to be at the top, then become a servant. But nobody want to be a servant. They want to be on the front row with their titles. So, okay, that works in the church. That don't work in the real world. That doesn't work with your vision. And that is why so many people become frustrated and they get angry at God. And some of y'all going to be angry at me, but I'm telling y'all the truth. You, you better take it for what it's worth. Y'all both telling you the truth. 
one of the best things I've ever had ever done was separate my faith from foolishness and then embraced the process. I'm telling y'all right now, if I had known way back then that the vision would take this long to manifest, I swear to goodness, I never would have left my job. But if the truth be told, the vision had manifested and I didn't even notice. I was too busy complaining. On page 24 of the book, I share how I had to overcome my own fears. Oh, we talked about that in a couple days ago. Uh, day 99, 100, 101, when I had to prepare this workbook. And little did I know that three visions were buried inside of my talking points from 2006. 2010, while I was complaining and fussing because the vision was taking so long to come to pass, I did not realize three things I had written in 2006 had all become reality. I struggled with the process until I realized that the delay, you know, to me it was a delay because I told y'all, God don't have no clocks in heaven. I realized that the delay had nothing to do with the vision and everything to do with this little lady right here, this little cute one, look back right here, look at that one. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, sugar. You see the one waving at you? Me right here. The problem was me. My vision, I'm going to tell you what it was. I had a vision that I was an inspirational speaker. Me, messiest one in the church. But at the time, I was in everybody's business. If you wanted to scoop on anybody, all you had to do was call me. I was busy putting time and effort into other folks' affairs while my own life was tore up from the flow up. I needed to go through the process. My dang self. After starting my newsletter in 2004, then I started my magazine in 2006, I was forced to take my own medicine because my gift, I was forced to take my own medicine because, oh, that's if. I was forced to take my own medicine, told y'all I'm reading, because if my gift and my talent and my anointing couldn't help me to be all I can be, it would never help nobody else be all they can be. Be careful of people that's gifted and anointed. You better look You better look at them and look at their life. My gift and my anointing ought to first work at home. It ought to first work at home. I can't be, I can't have a gift of healing, but my husband is a crack at it. I can't have uh, uh, the gift of casting out devils, but my daughter can't keep her drawers up and got five babies by five different men. Look at people's lives. Are they taking their medicine? Does their family respect them? Does they, their children, the spouse, do they respect them? Is your message working with your family? Sometimes you have children who are just straight up in rebellion. They want to be knuckleheads. I ain't talking about them. Let them go ahead on out there and act crazy. You're going to do what you want to do. But your message, it ought to first at least work on you. And it ought to be working on those closest to you. So come back tomorrow. We're going to talk more about understanding the process. Let's get some music on. I forgot to tell y'all I'm live on location. I got a sale on my books. Go to my website, yoboproductions.com. Everything is on sale for $5. So get yourself hooked up and just keep on living the best life. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.